So talk to me about an executive assistant because we were chatting before that you, that you had one for eight years, nine years. Nine years now. Yeah. Nine years. And I know a lot of CEOs, they feel like they should have an executive assistant. And I have clients who they should have hired one years ago. W what made you get one? How'd that process go? And walk us through what she does for you every single week to make your life easier. So to start, um, I, I saw a lecture one day with Jack Daly. And Jack says, if you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant. Right. Uh, how many hours do you spend just coordinating uh, phone calls or restaurants or buying plane tickets? It's crazy. So if, if there's a lot of things that you do that you really have to understand uh, that anyone else or someone else could do for you. Um, now, Mayra has been working for me for nine years. Uh, she lives in Querétaro. Um, she has been remote all her life. We've never worked in the same office. I understood I needed to have someone that manage my email most than anything. I have a big email problem. I probably get three or 400 emails every day. A lot of clients asking for things and, hey, let's, let's set up a meeting or a call or, or a podcast or whatever. And I got uh, Gmail and she has access to my Gmail. Today, probably five or six of my employees respond emails from my email every day. I probably respond 10% of my emails. All the other 90% are responded by someone else. Sometimes they tell you they're them, and sometimes they don't even tell you. People say like, yeah, thank you for the information. No, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, I emailed you and you sent me this. Oh, okay, great, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, so, so they do a lot of my email. Well, uh, let's talk about that before we keep going, because I think that's where a lot of people get scared. I have VAs. I probably have 12 VAs that cover my email. They, they don't pretend to be me. I have a rule that they can't pretend to be me. Um, but they're, they're in there. And, and just like you, about 10% of the emails, maybe a little less, get, get forwarded to me. They know which ones to escalate. How did you overcome that fear? How did you set up a system where emails aren't getting missed, where you don't lose that, that client experience that they would get if, if you were answering every single one? So you don't start 100% just say, here it is, right? Um, there, there's a graph the other day I heard or I saw that you have to give someone knowledge and then give them a little bit of control and then more knowledge and then control, knowledge, control, knowledge, control. If you give a lot of control without knowledge, you'll make a disaster. Right. A lot of knowledge with no control and the person's going to be desperate. So you have to do little by little. Um, and he was at the beginning saying, hey, go to my email and delete uh, all the things that we don't need, right? As an example, before I didn't allow her to delete, uh, she had to send to a folder, and I used to go to that folder and review and make sure whatever she was deleting was correct. So right. things like that, uh, we, we've, been, we've been doing a lot. Uh, so little by little, I begin giving her tasks, and she began performing them well. And by the way, have she made sometimes mistakes? Oh, yeah. Is that it's like there's sometimes people email me and say, Hey, your assistant is responding and you're not responding, and they get mad. Eh. But for one person that gets mad, 10 other or 50 other got served faster and better. So, if you, if you want to be perfect or you want them to be you, it's impossible, that's never going to happen. But here's one thing that is important when I hire Mayra, um, Mayra had recently divorced, had a daughter, a daughter of a couple of years. And I came to her and said, hey, I need an assistant, but here's the contract. I need you to at least work for me for 10 years as my executive assistant. Wow. And she said, 10 years? And I was like, yeah. And I said, you have a daughter, two years. I will allow you to work wherever you want, go to all the fairs or whatever you have to go to her school. I will raise your salary every year, but I will not improve your job position, let's say, every year. But these 10 years that you have to be close to your daughter and flexible, I will allow you to have that flexibility and the income that you need to work from home. And she said, okay, I mean, and that was it. And like a marriage, we've had fights. We've got several big, big fights. And, but because we're committed for 10 years, we have to sit down and figure out. We have to sit down and resolve it. So we've been times that I, if we didn't have the agreement of 10 years, oh my God, I would have killed her. And she would have probably killed me. <laughs> We have to sit down and say, hey, you know what? This didn't work, it was a mistake. How can we fix it and solve it? And that's been very, very powerful for us. We had a verbal commitment of at least 10 years. And we're nine years into it. And it's been great uh, up to now. And with time, I've been allowing other 
employees in my office to get into my email and start doing things. We have learned together, little by little, how to work and do more things. I, I love it. I, I've never heard of that, a 10-year contract with, with a VA, although it wasn't really a contract, but you were setting the expectation up front. And I, honestly, I think more people should do that because you get some people who hire a VA and the VA leaves after a year or six months or whatever it is, and, and the business owner isn't ready for it. And at least you have that expectation there. And it sounds like she did as well. Um, I, I love it. So how do you decide when to hire someone in the office or when to hire them remote? remote? I, I am a coach. I do a lot of coaching. I travel a lot. I probably travel 250,000 miles a year. Uh, I, I do sessions all over the world. 